new construction versus older homes. In this video, you're gonna find out what's better for you, a newer home or older construction. How to make thousands of dollars buying new homes with before you even own it. In older homes, what to buy and how to figure out if something is a deal or not. You're gonna learn my strategy that I've done many times to make money buying new homes. In an upwardly moving market like we're in right now, it's a great idea to look at buying a new home and getting a contract while it's being built. You'll often find that there's substantial upside for you because you put maybe 5,000 or 1,000 or $10,000 on the high side down to get a contract on the house. And during the construction phase, which could take anywhere from on the low side, three months, on the high side, six months, right in that window to get your house built. Typically, you may see appreciation because as the home builder releases homes, they slightly raise the prices. With the demand we're having today, sometimes it's a little more than slightly. Recently, one of my friends bought a new home after 19 years of being in her last home. She bought her last home for in the mid threes and she sold it in the low 700s. So basically, she lived there for free for 19 years after the tax benefits and the tax-free money that she got, her and her husband, you get anywhere from 250,000 as an individual and 500,000 as a married couple tax-free. Please check with your accountant. I'm not an accountant, but that's typical common knowledge if you've lived in it two of the last five years based on the current tax code. She bought a new home and during the escrow process and during the building process, her home has gone up like forty, fifty thousand dollars in price and she hadn't even moved in yet. So there you have that she put, you know, five thousand dollar deposit or a ten thousand dollar deposit and she's up five, eight, ten times depending on what her deposit was, I don't remember if it was five or 10, of what her deposit was and she hasn't even closed escrow yet. So you could see in these new homes, you especially in a hot market where we have now, they have a lot of upside. The key with new homes is you have to be pre-qualified in order to write an offer and sometimes there's a wait list. But if you get on the list, they call you and say, are you interested in the house? That's a great way to build equity before you even move in and give yourself an opportunity to have upside in real estate without the risk of owning the real estate. Say it went down 50,000, you could say, you know what, I'm not gonna buy it for whatever reason, and oftentimes get your deposit back. On older homes, there can be value there too. I always look at price per square foot, and I always look at the neighborhood and the comparable sales and what this one is. You know, I've been buying homes lately from people that have either passed away or inherited a state or they got elderly and had to go into homes and their trustee for them sold their home because a lot of these homes are in family trust, right? Or estate trust. And so they just want to get rid of the home. They don't want to fix it. They don't want to paint it. They don't want to do a lot because frankly, they don't have the money to do it. So your goal in buying real estate on the older side is to usually find things where people no longer want the home. They want a fair, reasonable price, but they'll give you a discount for not having to get it ready to sell. Back to my friend who bought the new home, her home was ready to sell. She did everything, touched up the paint, had the carpets clean, fixed the little things that needed to be fixed around the home after 19 years, did a little termite work that needed to be done, dry rot, that type of thing and painted and had it all nice and ready to go. So she got more money than say someone who has a sick spouse or they have moved on or they lost a spouse or basically just passed away, they wanna sell the house or they're moving out of state and they don't have a lot of money to fix the house. They just wanna get their money and move on. I recently bought a house just last week. That was the situation. The people did not wanna fix the house so the house was lower priced, had a lot of offers on it, but I got the house because my offer was non-contingent on financing, which means I knew I had financing, so I didn't need an out or a contingency or an, a thing in the contract which says that if I can't get the loan, I can get out of the contract. They knew I was gonna close, plus I have a reputation because I buy property in the area. By writing the offer that way, I beat out several people and got the house, okay? so. 
That house I bought for less than current market, but I have the ability to fix it up and make it worth market value because I have the funds. They did not. They're moving to guess where? Texas. So they want a quick close. They want to get their money and they want to move to Texas. So that's another reason where people will not want to fix up the house. So if you don't want to fix up houses, then I suggest you buy new or mostly new homes when you buy it, right? Buy a house that's new or mostly new. You're not going to have the frenzy usually in most new subdivisions that you're going to have in the resale market, okay? In the resale market, you've got hundreds of agents trying to sell that home to make a commission. On new homes, those same hundred agents maybe trying to sell a home, but it's typically controlled by the office and the realtor in the office. So you could walk in there and without an agent and buy a home directly from them and they sort of control the transaction a little more versus out in the resale market, which is crazy. I've done both. I've done well buying newer homes. I've done well buying used homes. I've owned homes in you know multiple states in the past. And I gotta tell you, you can do real well in new homes, but you generally, if the market turns, you wanna get rid of them relatively quickly and get your money out of them. If you're gonna live in it for 10 or 20 or 30 years, you're usually gonna be fine. If you're looking to buy something and flip it, you're gonna need some time to build up some equity. Because even if you're up 50,000, by the time you pay all the real estate costs, you're not making a lot of money, you know? So it's just an exercise and wasting a lot of time. In a newer home, you want the whole neighborhood to get established, you want you know, homes with curb, gutters, sidewalk, street lights. You want a really nice home, a really nice neighborhood. Master plan communities are great. And those give you an opportunity to landscaping grow, let the schools come up, let the community grow. And then there's more and more demand as there's not enough inventory. Once everything is built out, prices tend to stabilize a little higher over time. So that's why I like new homes versus used homes if you don't want to fix stuff up. If you want to fix stuff up, I like new homes less and I like used homes better. I've done both. It sort of depends on your preference. And by the way, speaking of preferences, I prefer that you subscribe now, please, so that we can stay in communication and you can help me reach more people. And maybe I'll have an insight or two that may save you tens of thousands of dollars. I mean, I've been only doing this for 30 years and I do it all the time. There's probably something that I know that you don't know that I'll be able to tell you that may make you money or save you money or keep you out of trouble. So do subscribe, okay? And lastly, I'm gonna tell you a quick little story about new versus used, so stay tuned. So prior to 2007, I had bought and sold new homes and used homes. And when the market turned, I couldn't sell homes because there was no money. The credit markets were frozen. So I had a home that I sold three times and every buyer who was pre-qualified couldn't get a loan because the markets were freezing and there was problems, right? So at the time I was buying, renting, holding and selling and I was making money. The challenge was I had too many properties and I had too many that I was holding and the market turned very quickly and I got hurt really bad, like hundreds of thousands of other people. Many people lost their homes and all that. People worry, is that gonna happen again? And the answer is, I don't think so. Because as a matter of public policy, the government doesn't want a bunch of people vacating their homes like last time and neither do the banks. The banks just want the cash flow. Right? The difference between last time was a lot of the investors were speculators and were using homes and loans that were state and income. For me, most of my investments were 15, 20, 30% down, 25% down in order to get into the property because I was an investor. Some I traded into using a 1031 exchange. One I particularly remember, I put 200,000 down and you know the thing went even below that. So. There's gonna be challenges ahead, but not right away, I don't think. So if you're gonna buy new or mostly new homes and you're gonna buy them as investments, plan on holding them a very long time, 10, 15 years, okay, a long time. If you're gonna flip them, then you're gonna to have to get out of them before the market may correct. What's gonna cause the correction? Changes in the economy, changes in taxes, changes in jobs, changes in wages, things you can't predict. So 
Long-term hold for real estate, highly recommend it. Trying to flip new homes, very tough. Flipping used homes that are people have passed away or they don't want to fix them or whatever that you can buy at a low price per square foot or lower than the market. I like at least a $50,000, at least $50,000 from where I fix it to where I could sell. I prefer a hundred. That's where you want to be because a hundred thousand and upside after you do everything, maybe like 40 or 50 when you're done. So Paul McGuire, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on the next video. Good talking to you today.